Okay, so let's get into a very important part of trap music and, of course, a very important, basically, all modern dance music, and that is making the beat. So whereas house beats creates sort of forward movement, that's sort of what they're designed to do with the kick, the snare, and the offbeat hat, always creates this sort of forward movement to it, dubstep beats tend to have a kind of swagger to them and trap beats kind of have an attitude that doesn't mean that they don't have swagger or that they don't have forward movement in them just that they tend to have a bit more sort of attitude than other beats so just like in any other genre the kick and snare are the main sort of grounding elements for the beat however the actual rhythm and the feel of it what gives the beat its attitude comes from the other elements And when I say other elements, I really mean it can be almost any other element. It could be bass, screeching, leads, chop vocals, hats, and so on. We're actually going to be looking at most of these and using, at times, a combination of all of them. Uh, For now, though, we're just going to focus on the drums. So let's get in some snares, make a nice hat loop, and add some attitude. So again, I'm going to go to my right-hand zone and show our media sort of browser. Click on media, loops and samples, and I'm going to use snares from the GA1 library this time. So I'll just click on that. And at the moment, hi-hats is selected, so I can just click on that or I can click reset attributes filter and then scroll to snares. And then I can, oh, that's nice. Um, And then I can just audition whatever snares I want to use. So I like that one. That's kind of very sort of traditional trap almost or even hip hop kind of sound. So I like that. I'm going to drag that in. So normally the snare would fall on the second beat and the fourth beat respectively, like so. Whoa, that's a bit loud. Okay, just going to turn that down. Okay, that's how a beat would normally be made. But with trap and some other genres, it's actually really helpful to work in what's called half time. Just mute the snare for a second. So whereas a normal beat would actually be like four beats, like so, with half time, the beats are just twice the distance apart. So they would be like this. Now, the reason we work at half tempo in some instances is because, especially in like trap music, you get those like really fast programmed hats and stuff like that. Those are sort of much easier to do when you're working at half tempo. So that's what we're going to be doing. Now I'm going to work at, let's change the tempo here. I'm going to make this track 170 BPM. So that actually means that sort of the true tempo really is 85 BPM, half that of 170. And the snares, of course, as they would normally go on the sort of uh, second and fourth beat, as I mentioned, instead they go on, on the third beat of each bar, which is halfway through each bar. So effectively, when you're working at half time, two bars is equal to one bar very confusing but actually once you get used to it it's actually really handy and you'll kind of start to see why when we start playing around with the hat in just a moment um okay so first of all I just want to activate my loop region so this all loops around and i'm just going to copy my two snares across so that's a full four bars and i will be referring to the actual bars not the sort of half times so i will actually refer to one bar as actually one bar in this even though we're working at half time i'm not going to say you know two bars is one bar (laughs) oh man very confusing but you'll get used to it okay so let's just start programming in a sort of beat with a bit of attitude and although the kick always falls on the first beat of the bar as with any other genre always the sort of second and third kicks if you have them in very rarely actually fall on the start of a bar that's more like if you're doing sort of half step drum and bass or something like that. Um, so they're always going to fall on a half beat or something that basically has a bit more attitude. And this is one of the ways in which we can get that sort of trap uh, sort of sound and attitude out of it. So let's just copy that across. Let's try that. Okay, yep, yeah, that's kind of cool. I'm just going to copy those across. So they're in the same place. Let's get, get rid of uh, our right hand zone so i've got a bit more room and this last one i just want to repeat the kick there okay so at the moment my snap type is on grid relative okay which basically means that it's going to sort of hold the relative position of the end so the end there isn't falling exactly on a 16th so in order to get it to snap to the actual grid line i need to change that from grid relative to grid 
And that comes in very, very handy, which you'll find out about later. But for now, I just want it on the grid. I'm just going to drag in that. Let me zoom in just a touch. And I'm just going to drag in that right hand envelope just to make sure we get a nice smooth exit from the kick and we don't get any nasty little clicks or pops. Very important. And then I'm just going to copy that kick across. Now we don't want that last one overlapping, so I'm going to draw that back in. So when we copy the kicks across, obviously the next one's going to start right from there. So let's just have a listen to that. Okay, and we've got the start of a beat with a bit of attitude, but of course that's only a very small part of it. Now we need to put in a hat and really sort of get that sort of feel to it, that trap sort of feel. One thing I want to do though first is just layer up the snare, because although it's a very nice snare, I could just do it being just a little bit brighter, perhaps a bit crunchier. So again, I go to my right hand zone and snare drum. That sounds good. Okay, let's drag that in. Again, this is in the J1 sample bank. Uh, let me close my zone again. Turn it down before it breaks my eardrums and these headphones. That's still pretty loud. Okay, so as you can probably hear, that's without. And it's just, just adding a little bit of brightness, that's all. Um, but we'll come to mixing that sort of fully and properly later on. But for now, that's all good. So I want to get my hat in. So again, get my right hand zone. And I want to deselect snare, so that's unselected. And I want to scroll up and find hi-hats. These are all quite nice, so let's just pick one. It doesn't matter which one, because we can actually just change it whenever we want, even when we've got the uh, drum pattern in there. So I'm just going to right click it, and we're going to create a sampler track. Now the reason I'm using a sampler track here is because one, it's easier to sort of program these in MIDI. Two, it means that I can change the sound at any time I like and it's not going to mess with the pattern. Whereas if I create a pattern out of audio samples and I want to change the sample, then it's going to be a pain in the ass because I'd have to actually recreate the rhythm every single time. But if I do it in MIDI, the MIDI stays and the sample can just be changed. So I'll show you what I mean in a sec. And the third good thing is that you can also change the pitch of this. So, so as you would have noticed, if you listen to any trap music, that you can sort of get all these like pitched up sort of uh, sounds all over the place, like the little hat sounds being pitched up and down. So it's another good thing about the sampler. Okay, so as this is requiring MIDI, I'm going to draw that in. So I just hold down Alt on my keyboard and draw in the MIDI block. So before we go any further, let's just turn that down. Okay, that should be fine. Then I'm going to go into the MIDI. Obviously, I've got my keyboard down here. Now, with any sample that you put in the sampler, its normal standard root note will be on C. Even if the sample isn't written in C, that's where its stock pitch will be. So if I put it on anything else at all, it will be in a different pitch to what the actual original is. You can change that in the sampler, but that's not for the hat. We'll, we'll get to that later. So I can start drawing in my MIDI. Let's just see what all this sounds like as we go. Okay, that's a good start. So all I'm doing as I sort of draw this in really is just try and get a feel for it, so see where I want it to go, just have a listen through and just see where my imagination really takes the sort of hat pattern. Let's just try this. Okay, that kind of sounds quite nice. Definitely suits the kick going on there. Um, I'm just going to shorten these though. So if I go to my quantize settings, change that to 64th. I'm just going to shorten all of those. Okay, no probs. Change my quantize back to 16th of a bar and just copy all of that across. Now I'm going to have a modification in the second half there. 
So let's just mess this bit up a bit. Let's try that. Okay, that's not too bad. I just don't like that hat there. And I want a little fill at the end. So what I can do is just zoom in and I'm gonna select those three, hold down Alt and just copy those across and go back to 64ths. And let's move that one so it's there. So this is where the sort of half time comes in handy because it's easier to stick these extra little tiny fills in. Uh, and also one other thing I'm gonna do, I've gotta to go to the velocity which is these little bars down here and just sort of draw in a little ramp there. So this last little bit, since you probably don't want that one, just the end gives a little flick. Okay, that's sounding pretty good so far, I quite like that. So that's a not a bad trap beat at all. I'm fairly happy with that. And you can really sort of hear in it the sort of attitude or, you know, what I call attitude in the trap beat. And just one quick tip as well. So I've used the sampler um, on purpose in this, as I said, for those three reasons. And now if I want to, I can literally just have that playing and just drag in different hat samples and try them out. I actually quite like that, so. so I'm going to leave it actually on what we did have. I quite like that sound, but you can just select any sound you want, or you could even try percussion or something like that. You know, just, you know, feel free to experiment and go crazy. Okay, and there's one thing that I actually just noticed, and that is that this hat doesn't quite start at the very beginning of the sample. So I'm just going to zoom into this sample here, and I'll do that by holding control and then using my mouse wheel. But you've also got the same sort of zoom in and out functions as you do in the main arrange window over here as well. And you can see there that obviously there's quite a bit of a gap before the actual sample starts. So you just have to move the set sample start cursor. So just bring it over until you get the double ended arrow and then I can just move that to the very start of the sample. Uh, now one handy little thing that we've got in the sampler is this snap to zero crossing. Okay, so if I select that and then move this, it'll only, it sort of becomes sort of jittery almost because it's snapping to where the waveform crosses the zero point, meaning that wherever it starts from, it's not gonna introduce a, a click. You do, however, also have a fade setting on this, so I can do that, that's the top sort of block just above the S, it's pretty hard to see, but that is there. And if you grab that, you can then select a an envelope curve if you wish. I don't need one, I just wanted to start from the very beginning. Okay, so let's just check that. Okay, and that's absolutely fine. So in the next lesson, we're gonna go quickly through just adding some reverb groups so we can start adding reverb to our drums.